so good to be out tonight for Friday Night Live Worship. I'm excited about the presence of God I feel in this place tonight. Even before time, there seems to be such a presence. And as I walked up and down here, I wondered if some of the presence of God that Pat Hollerman left here wasn't feeling here tonight. Hallelujah. We're so glad for you that have come out. We're so glad of, for you that have joined us by the way of internet. We're in for a great service tonight. We have our brother Mark with us all the way from Cape Town, Africa, going to be ministering in music and in the Word and we're just looking for a great, great time in the Lord tonight. Before we turn the service over to Brother Mark, I would like to thank you guests for being with us tonight. And I would like to remind each of you that are watching and those that are here, let's remember our next event, April the 7th through the 9th, Arise intercessors. We're calling the intercessors to come. Dr. Samuel Matthews that has the Reese Howe anointing upon him is going to be here teaching us for four great services. And Brother Claren McQueen will be here leading in the worship to lead us into the presence of God. So if you haven't registered already, go online just as soon as the service is over and register for April the 7th through the 9th for our Rise Intercessors. I want to tell you something. I registered a 95-year-old lady that's coming from Ohio today along with some others. And she's ready for Arise intercessors. Out of the five I have listed flying in already, four of the five is over 85 years old. These intercessors are coming. They are serious with God. They're flying in. They don't need any help. But they're coming in to help us line up with intercessors arise. And oh, the presence of God I feel in this place tonight. I just thank God. Let's remember that. Enter in. Worship with us tonight as we go to Brother Mark all the way from Cape Town, Africa. Brother Mark. God bless you. Amen. Make yourself at home in the presence of God. Father God, we just come into your presence tonight. We just worship you, Jesus. For Father, we know it's all about you. It's never been about man. Tonight we just come and give you all the glory and all the honor. Just raise our hearts before you, Jesus. You're so welcome in this place. Hallelujah. So, Father, tonight we just want you to know that we love you. We're grateful, Jesus, for all that you did and accomplished on our, on our behalf. Hallelujah. So we give you glory in this place tonight. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Surround me, O oh Lord. Would you just like to stand with me? Surround me, Lord. Surround me, Lord. Let your presence fill the air. Let your presence, Lord, fill. Surround.
Let your presence fill the air. Let your presence. tonight, Jesus. Surround me, O Lord. Surround me, O Lord. Surround me, O Lord. Let your presence fill this place. Let your presence Lord, overflow, hallelujah. God, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. Jesus, we worship in your presence. We worship in your presence, mighty God, hallelujah. Surround me, O oh Lord. Surround Surround me, O oh Lord. Let your presence fill the air. Let your presence, yes, Lord, fill this place. Let your presence fill my heart. <laughs> Let your presence, Lord, fill this place. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. Father, we raise our hearts before you tonight. We raise our hearts before you. We raise our hearts before you. Glorify your name. Glorify. Holy, so holy, you're holy, Lord. You're holy, you're holy, you're holy, Lord. You're holy, you're holy.
we love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you, the Lord. We praise you, Jesus, hallelujah. Come and declare that you are so worthy. Jesus, you alone are worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy to be honored in this place, in our hearts, and our lives. May all that we do, God, be a reflection of who you truly are. For Jesus, we know it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, all about you Jesus. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill our hearts, Jesus, as we worship in your presence, mighty God. We declare that all sorrow goes in Jesus' name. Every heartache, <laughs> every concern be washed away as we sit in the river and bathe in the river and bathe in the glorious presence of the living God. We can confidently declare that you are worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. Worthy, you're worthy, Lord. Worthy, worthy, you're worthy, our Lord. And we love you, we love you, we love. We love you, yeah, we love you, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We worship in your presence. We worship before you, mighty God. We declare there is no God like our God. Hallelujah. We praise your name. We praise, we praise. Praise you alone, Jesus. For God, you are the reason we live. Hallelujah. Ooh. We live to praise. We live to bring glory and honor to the living God. There's no other reason, hallelujah, but to come into your presence and worship. Worship you, Jesus. Worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. 
We worship you, Jesus. of God even by way of television at home I just want to encourage you to just tell Jesus how much you love him hallelujah you know there's something that I just have learned to do and that is just to allow my life to be an expression of that love <laughs> because Jesus loves me so much and I can't help but just allowing that love to flow through my heart directed back towards him for when I was lost and had no way out Jesus came died on the cross of Calvary that I might be called 
the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. So tonight, just raise your hands with me. says where two or three are gathered in your name there you are in their midst <laughs> you're so welcome in this place Holy Spirit thou art well come in this place Holy Spirit thou art well come in this place Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art well, come in this place, Holy Spirit. A couple of days ago, Andy and I, my wife and I, we were in the nation of Qatar, which is in the Middle East. And I stood, I can remember standing on the top of the roof in my daughter's home. On the left hand side was a mosque and a couple of blocks away was another one. And these guys were doing their thing and they were praying and doing whatever Muslims do. <laughs> But you know that Christianity is not allowed in these nations. And I stood on that roof and I said, Father God, how can anybody blot out the opportunity to worship the most holy God? And while I was standing on that roof and I just thought, you know, how will this nation ever get saved? And then God says, not by power nor by might, but by my spirit. Hallelujah, says the Lord. So I began to praise the Lord on top of that roof. <laughs> Nobody's going to shut me up. <laughs> Just be able to worship Him in spirit and in truth. What an awesome God. And so, Father, we just say you are welcome in our hearts tonight. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Thou art well come in my heart. Holy Spirit, Thou art well in my heart omnipotent Father of mercy and grace Thou art well come in my heart Thou art well come in my heart what a wonderful opportunity we have to be able to stay and, and stand in this nation <laughs> and worship God. You might see there are certain restrictions around you and Ten Commandments being removed here and prayer stopped over there and all sorts of things happening. But child of God, I don't want you to look around you. I don't want you to be concerned about what they are saying and what they are doing. <laughs> 
for the God that reigns on the inside of you, hallelujah. The God that reigns on the inside of you has given you life. And His abundant life reigns, hallelujah. And so it doesn't matter who wants to stop saying what, who wants you to stop saying what, you still have the right and the freedom in this country to worship God. So make use of every minute, hallelujah, to raise your hands before the living God. And say, Father God, we worship you. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Express your love, not only in words, but in deed. <laughs> Let your actions reflect the heart of him who you serve tonight. God has a supernatural plan for America. And in I love this nation. Hallelujah. But above all, I want you to know that God loves you. You are his precious people. <laughs> A holy nation and doesn't matter who wants to say what who's pulling on which side our God remains in control hallelujah and all we have to do is raise our hearts before him and worship him and worship him worship him alone worship worship me Raise your hearts before me, says the Lord. Raise your hearts before me. Do not be afraid of that which is taking place around you. But worship me. But worship me. You see, child of God, we are so busy with everything else. But the very thing that is so important, we sometimes set aside. Nothing else is more important to me than living my life in such a way that God be glorified in everything that I do and say. I'm not in the ministry today because I think it's a good idea. I do it because it's a part of my worship, my obedient heart before the living God. And everything that we do and say brings praise to Him, brings praise to Him. Even in the midst of your battle, hallelujah, you can still bring praise to God. When things don't seem to be working out for you, you can still praise God, hallelujah. You can still raise your hands before Him. When sickness is surrounding you and you don't know which way to turn, you can still raise your hands before the living God. You can still worship in His presence, hallelujah. It doesn't matter what action has been brought against you, what accusation has been brought against you. It doesn't matter what man says or does. You still can lift your hands before God. In other words, in every situation is an opportunity for God to be glorified in your heart, in your life. You're saying, Brother Mark, my marriage is not working out the way it should. My friend, you just carry on worshiping God and see how God will restore. Hallelujah. You might say, but my children are not serving God. Things are not going well in our home. Friend, all you have to do is raise your hand before God and worship Him. But maybe I should try this or should try that. Or Step one, step two, and step three. No, my friend, just raise your hands before God and worship Him. And worship Him. For He alone deserves your praise. Hallelujah. He alone deserves your praise. Worship Him. Worship. Worship. Oh, yeah. Worship the living God. Praise His holy name. Worship, worship the Lord, for He. 
Zechariah 10 verse 8 says, Come, come, for the Lord whistles over you. He gathers you. Hallelujah. Gathering. This is a prophetic whistle encouraging you to come, to come unto me in worship. Thank you. 
I am the Lord your God, the deliverer of your heart. Come before me now, says the Lord. Come before me now. Set aside your ambitions, set aside your ideas, set aside everything that would hinder my perfect flow through your heart and your life. Set aside the things that have kept you so busy. <laughs> Come before me. I see even right now the Lord wiping away tears. The broken heart had been touched and restored even as, as we ministered to the living God. I see tonight people with no hope, <laughs> receiving new hope as, as their eyes are lifted up to Him. I see God healing hearts and restoring lives even as we come into His presence this very hour. Declaring this is a new beginning, a new day in your heart. Hallelujah. Declaring that you have been set free. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus, you are Lord alone. We worship you, mighty God. The very thing that has been troubling you, God says, I remove it this day. For so long you've been sitting and you feel that you've had this blockage. But by the Spirit of the living God, I declare this day that you are free. Free to flow in the presence of God. Free to flow in the river of God. Free to, free to flow in His presence. Hallelujah. Free to worship Him. Just come. Just come before the Lord your God. Worship Him. I see there are folks that have been praying for family members. And God saying to you tonight, hallelujah. You will see with your own eyes the very thing that you've been asking for. Given to you, hallelujah. As an answer to your prayer and to your faithfulness. I see people that have been having financial difficulties tonight. God says, as you praise in my presence, as you come before me and worship me, you will see how I will add to you measure upon measure. For my grace is sufficient, declares the Lord. Come. Come with repentant hearts. Come bow in my presence. I see families taking hands tonight and just reaching out to the Lord. I see waywardness being restored tonight as God renews the focus in families' hearts. I see fathers being restored. I see the presence of God filling homes right now. Mothers being touched. Children bowing in the presence of the living God. For I have a plan for you, says the Lord far greater than you even began to think or could imagine. All I want is that you would come, that you would gather in my presence. Come, come. Don't sit afar off. Come before me. Come before me. The invitation is to come, sit in my presence, to sit before me. Come stand in my presence, come stand before my throne.
I have not finished my work that I have begun in this nation, declares the Lord. Do not grow weary. Do not grow weary. Do not grow concerned. But reach out to me. As you call upon my name. As you call upon my name. Shall come with healing in my wings. Healing in my wings. <laughs> restoring hearts. Restoring, restoring, restoring hearts. Foundations being restored. Hallelujah. I'm making the path straight. The crooked path straight, says the Lord. The valleys, I'm flattening the valleys. Bring the high places down. For I will be glorified in this place. I will be glorified in this ground. See, I'm doing a new thing in your midst, declares the Lord. So come, church, come and worship in my presence. Do not entertain anything that is not of me, but bow before me and worship me. Even in this season, God says, as you would come, you will see my hand upon you. You will see that I am leading you and I'm guiding you and I'm guiding my children, bringing you into that place that I have purposed for you. Do not be afraid, for I gather you from the north and from the south and from the east and from the west. Gathering you, bringing you unto myself, jealously guarding that which is mine. Do not listen to the voices around you, but listen to my heart. Listen to the sound of my heart beating. Listen to the sound of my voice, declares the Lord. I am the freedom, the liberty, hallelujah, that you seek, declares God. So come, come to the Lord. Return, return, O hungry heart, return to me. Return, you are thirsty, come, come before the Lord your God. America, the greatness of God shall be revealed in you. The goodness of God shall be revealed in you and the nation shall see the glorious hand of God upon you. For in this place the fire of God will burn. In this place the fire of God will burn. The glory of God will be revealed. The glory of God will be revealed. The glory of our God will be revealed. Church, rise up in the name of the living God. Declare the word that I have placed in your heart. Speak out aloud. Hallelujah. Sound the trumpet. Declare the Lord your God. Worship in my presence. Hallelujah. Worship me. <laughs> this is a time to take back the land. This is a time to stand on my word. This is a time to praise in my presence and see, says the Lord, that I am the healer of hearts. I'm the one that delivers. I'm the one that sets free. I am alone, God. There's no other before me. There's no other like me. So do not be concerned about the voices of dissension, the opposing voices, the enemy. But listen to your God. Hallelujah. Listen to my word. The word that I've placed in your heart. For I am the one, says God, that shall reign supreme. <laughs> and my church, I gather you unto myself. The remnant of the living God. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. I see thousands of people streaming together in one place, in one accord, united in the Spirit of the living God. I see a move of the Spirit of God across this land. The 
wind of change, hallelujah, the glory of God. For the Lord would say to you that I have not deserted you. I've not deserted you. I've not deserted my own, hallelujah. <laughs> but I'm taking back that which rightfully belongs to me. Do not be concerned, little ones. But you stand in my presence and worship me. You will see, you will see, you will see the glory. You will see the glory. Woo. <laughs> the glory of God descending. The time of visitation is at hand. For I've heard your call and I've heard your cry to me and I've heard you, you cry out and say, God, come. And I've seen many things that have happened and I've seen the false. I've seen the man-made. But the time has come, says the Lord, for the truth to be revealed. Hallelujah. Woo. So this is the time to praise. This is the time to worship. This is the time to rejoice in my presence and worship me. And worship and worship me. Love the Lord. Oh, I'm so excited about you <laughs> praising God, worshiping Him. What a wonderful Jesus! I promise you, I could keep you busy like that all the time. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, ma I asked Mark just now if I could introduce him. Uh, I'm Pastor Sheila Art from the Glory Barn in Branson, Missouri. And, of course, I'm down here a lot. But uh, uh, Rhoda called me uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, said, you know, we'd love for you to come on a Friday night. And I said, well, I could come, but i got one better for you. Mark Labuschagne is going to be here from South Africa. And uh, he just arrived yesterday. And so, y'all, the first place he's gotten to minister, they're going to be here in the States for several months. And we're excited to have them uh, kind of located in Branson. They, uh, a couple in our church has a cottage at, behind their house, and they're staying there in the cottage. And uh, we're just going to get to have good fellowship and just see what God has to do. But we've known Mark and Andy Labuschagne for, what did we decide, 17 or 18 years. And uh, they have just been such a blessing in our life. Uh, some of you might know here, and some of you don't know, we were Baptists for years. Now, I never was a very good Baptist, but you know, I was always getting in trouble because I was always asking questions I shouldn't ask and doing things I shouldn't do. And praise God, they uh, finally just kind of gave us the left hand or left foot of fellowship and kind of set us free. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to share this because it's important to what happened. We... Uh, there were people came around us because we were already following in the Holy Ghost, having healings and gold dust and all these things happening in our church. And they didn't get bothered by that at all. They, when they, my husband ordained me, that's when they said, yeah, you know, that doesn't fit what we agree with. So that's, you know, probably better for you to find a better place. So 
other groups came to us and asked us to be part of that. But we, there was something in me that said, I don't want to get it in another box. I've been in a box most of my life. I never did fit. I'm always trying to kick the top off, and I want to just go for God. Everything that God has, I want. And I don't want any lid on me that says I can't go this far no more kind of thing. So I'm, uh, there was an old preacher we used to hang out around with. My girls and I traveled and sang for years, and we sang with this evangelist a lot. And he'd always say, um, the more I know, the more I know I don't know. And that's how I was living. And there was more I knew I didn't know and hadn't experienced, but I wanted to experience all of it. So we just said, God, we were just leaving ourselves open to whatever you want to do. And somehow or another, within the next few months, <laughs> no, actually, uh, Pastor John and I have asked, who used to pastor in Branson, was down in Florida, called my husband and said, I have a, uh, a prophet from South Africa that's really blessed our fellowship. I just believe y'all would be encouraged by his coming. So we, sight unseen, never knew her living before, except John Ivaska called us and said, would you have Prophet Mark Labishane come to your uh, ministry? And at that time, we had the Sunday morning theater ministry. You ministered in the theater, you know, a thousand people f from all over the world. And it's just amazing. So God really just pushes into a prophetic flow, and Mark was very instrumental in that. And so that's why we, I know God used him in our life, and for y many years, uh, their family, you know, I'm auntie to him, her mama, <laughs> and uh, and uh, just seeing what God's done in their life, and he sends them around the world, all over the place. They they actually have a really strong ministry in African, many nations in Africa, but they have a love for this nation. They love uh, the USA, so we're just really excited to have them here. Mark is a, a, a man of the word, a man, a, a, a strong prophet. They, they hadn't been to the house. They hadn't been with us for two hours. And he started saying, part of my reason for coming is I have a word for you, Sheila. And we're sitting at lunch, and he's prophesying. I think he prophesies more in restaurants than anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> Good place to prophesy. So I received uh, a word of encouragement. I know you're going to receive tonight. How many are ready to hear a word to encourage you? You know, his theme as he came to the U.S. was encourage the U.S.A. And so he's come to encourage us tonight. Would y'all welcome Prophet Mark Labuschagne from Cape Town, South Africa. Thank you, ma'am. We also, the reason why we love coming back is because of the gumbo <laughs> that we get in certain people's houses. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Friends, what a wonderful privilege just to be in the presence of God. Amen. I don't know about you, but there is no other reason that I live but to worship him. And you know, when we talk about worship, we're not just singing about us. We're not talking about some song that we're singing. Amen. We're talking about a lifestyle of honoring God. And I just cannot believe, or I cannot see any other reason why I live, but to bring glory and honor to the God that I say I serve. Hallelujah. And so I believe that what the Lord is saying and doing right now across, this, across the nation and across the world is causing his love to manifest in our hearts and our lives in such an amazing way that I believe that we are not going to recognize the church as we know it today in the time that lies ahead of us. God is busy. We've con we, many times we've heard people say, God is busy doing a new thing. Well, I want you to know that in fact, he is doing a new thing. Amen. And whether you see it right now or don't see it, it's got nothing to do with anything. The fact of the matter is, God is doing a new thing. And my heart is, Lord, begin a, that new thing in me. Let, the, let me not miss what you're about to do. Or let me say this, let me not miss what you already are doing. Hello? You know, we continue to wait for some golden daybreak. <laughs> we're waiting for something to happen out there. But I want to tell you, it's already happening on the inside of you. It happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. So there's nothing new that you have to look for because the new that we're talking about is already on the inside of you. Somebody say hallelujah. So that excites me. So I'm excited to know that God, the new thing that God started, hallelujah, even before the beginning of the world, even before the foundation of the earth, the new thing that God 
is doing, hallelujah, is manifesting in us every moment of our lives. Wherever we are, wherever we're going, that newness is already, hello. So I'm trying to encourage you. Don't look for something tomorrow. It's already on the inside of you. The very thing that you're seeking, the very revival that you're talking about, the very move of God, the very move of the Spirit of God is already on the inside of you. We don't need to go through step one, step two, and step three to inherit what God's already accomplished for and on our behalf. Hello? It's here. I mean, it's here. It's yours. The inheritance is already, you know, how many of you know that you've already received the inheritance? I believe it, yes. So it's yours. We're not waiting for someday. It's here. Amen. So I want to talk to you a little tonight. Uh, a question that's on my heart, very provoking question is this. Who are you following? Who do you say you are following? You know, with all respect, and I don't try to be a, a theologian. In fact, I'm, I leave that for the good guys to do all that good stuff. I, I don't try and profess to be a teacher of the word either. I leave that for the good guys to do the good stuff. But what I do believe is when the Spirit of God begins to speak to me, there are prophetic words on the inside of me that God begins to show me pictures of things that He's busy doing across the land. And I know that we need the teachers and we need the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and all these wonderful people that God's raised up. We need the gift in the church. But I want to ask you today, who are you following? Who are you? Are you following man's teaching today? Are you following the interpretation of, of brother so-and-so down the road? Are you in following the perceptions that someone else has placed uh, and spoken about that has uh, maybe uh, given you a certain direction that you're walking out? Maybe it's not the very thing that God has called you to walk in. So the question tonight is, who are you following? Who are we following? Who, are, who, who, who has got our attention? Hallelujah. And so what I like to do is, besides my Bible and my commentaries and all this stuff, uh, there's another good book that I like to use. It's called a dictionary. <laughs> and uh, so I decided to go check the word out, follow today, to see what it means. And maybe if you would just indulge me for a little, I will uh, try and share this with you. But once I, when I opened the book, uh, when I opened the dictionary to the word follow, um, I found the following, and it says, uh, the, ver the word follow means to go with or to come after. Now, I went to Mark chapter 8, verse 34, in the New King James Version. When I looked at that, I saw it says, when he called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Listen to me. Who do you follow today? Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, now listen to me, this is very simple. If you want to be like me, if you want me to display myself through you, if you want to walk in the very nature and the purpose of God, if you want my character flow through you, if you want everything that I am to manifest in you, all you have to do is deny yourself. All you have to do is very simple. All you have to do is say, I deny my flesh, I take up my cross, and I choose to follow him. Why? Listen to me, friend. I said it to you early on. The reason why I believe I live is to bring glory and honor to God. Now, bringing glory and honor to God is not just raising my hand and trying to do all sorts of things. No, bringing glory and honor to God is simply this, by surrendering my heart unconditionally to the Lordship of Jesus Christ on the inside of me. Hello? If I'm following Christ, then, you know, we're not using words to, to create a perception of who Christ is on the inside. No, no there's an English saying that says, action speaks louder than words. And church, if we want to be honest with ourselves, I'm concerned about the status quo in the church today. Because when the world looks at us, they ask the question, who are you following? Because I hear all these sort of things about, you know, the church is hypocrites. And, you know, we used to be called all sorts of names. But, you know, I actually don't blame the world for thinking or speaking about us the way they do. Because we have created this perception, we have created this opinion about who the Christ is that we serve. And let me tell you, it's a man-made perception, it's a man-made opinion, and it does not bring glory and honor to God. I'm not talking about Dr. Right, Reverend, Bishop, blue, blue, blah, whatever, with a fancy title and all these fancy things that they 
there. I'm not talking about the man that has the biggest church and the biggest bank account and the best car and the nicest house. I'm not talking about that church. I'm talking about men and women tonight who say, I am willing, I have laid my life down so that God be glorified in me. And so I ask you tonight, who do you say you follow? Do we look at you? Can we see that when we look at you, can we see the Christ in you? Does the world, when they look at the church, can they say that the church is the answer? Can they say that the church is the answer to the political situation we are faced with today? You are sitting in a country right now. You're about to have elections this year. You know what's going on with all the things that's happening around you, all the negative news and all the, But I'm looking for a church that will influence, hello? I'm looking for a people that will influence and say, follow us as we follow Christ. And right now, with respect, let this word be hard. Let it be direct to you tonight. And it's not yet to, cre to create a, a, a negative perception in your heart. But if we are truly serious about serving God, then it's time that people outside there would see Christ in us. So who do we follow? I'm not following a denomination, friend. Hello? I'm not following a religious ritual. I'm not following some rule. Sheila said she's not going to be put in another box. We're not part of those boxes that are out there. So when people look at you today, I don't want to be known by some, some, tra some traditional name that's outside my building. First this and second that and all these wonderful things that we use out there. Southern this and whatever else is out there. What I want to be known is as a man or a woman that has a heart after God. Hello? So whenever I come in contact with people outside there, they will know who I follow. They will know that I follow Christ. Amen? And let me tell you what it is to follow someone. To follow someone is to do exactly as they do. To, to run after them. Hello? When we serve Jesus, and you know, the day that you gave your life to Christ, you're actually saying, Father God, I surrender unconditionally to your Lordship in me. And whatever your plan is, whatever your purpose is for my life, that is all I settle down to. That's it. Uh, and you know what happens? Somewhere along the road, we start trying to add some mixture to the ingredient. Now, my wife, uh, when she does bake a cake or something like that, uh, it's not very often because we're not often at home. <laughs> That's a good excuse, eh? But, you know, when she does bake her cake, I, I know that, first of all, I'm not going to interfere with what she's doing in the kitchen because it's not going to work out. But Andy has certain ingredients that she puts into certain things. And let me tell you, when that cake comes out of that oven and she presents it to me, oh, you could see you <laughs> by just looking at me how nice it is. Uh, I have found that you cannot go and add other mixtures to that cake or to that process because it's not going to come out the same. So what we've done is we've come to Jesus Christ. We say that we, we, we lay our lives down, we surrender our hearts, we give our lives to Jesus. That's the day of salvation has come to us. And then all of a sudden, we start trying to add other ingredients to the mixture. And let me tell you, church, you're going to come to a place where you're so, so confused, you won't know whether you're Arthur or Martha. <laughs> Amen? And you'll begin to look at yourself, and even you will un won't understand, but the Word of God says this, but this is what I'm seeing happening in my own life. Why? Because you've possibly added an ingredient to your life that was never yours in the first place. We've got so many rules and regulations in the church today that I, I don't know how it's possible for us to survive in, in the church that we're living in. If we don't do this and we don't do that, and then this, this book is written, and then that DVD's out, and then it's this CD, and then we're all these chasers, and then we're running here, and we're doing this, and we're doing all this stuff. It's if we're looking for something to add to what's already been accomplished. You don't have to add anything to what Jesus has already done in your heart. All you have to do, my friend, is follow Him. So whatever you see him do, you do. Whatever he says, you say. Wherever he goes, you go. Hello? There's nothing more that you have to do. Follow closely behind him. Every step he takes is yours to follow. Amen? But we're so busy, we get so involved in the latest fad and the latest this and the latest that. When the next book is written out, we're all running after that. And all of a sudden, we all, you know what I'm saying? I'm not even going to use names today. All of a sudden, we are these chasers, and all of a sudden, we are that, and we're playing these, these prayers to our lives, and all. we're looking for something. Why look for what you already have? Why are you looking for more than what already works on the inside of you? Are we looking for another Christ? Are we looking for another Savior? 
Are we looking to chase and run after someone else? Hello? I'm not running after no man. <laughs> someone said to me, now this might sound arrogant to you and I mean to be. Somebody said, who's your mentor? I got a front, didn't know what they meant. Because I meant it by the Son of God. Hallelujah. When I follow hard after Him, I want to learn from Him. I don't want to learn from somebody else's opinions and interpretation of the Word of God. I'm not saying to you there's anything wrong with that. If that's what, you, that's what floats your boat, hello. But I have found when I spend time in the presence of God, there's something more of God that's imparted to me through His Son, Jesus Christ. And when I, when I live my life, it's not in honor of myself, but it's in honor of Him. I'm not trying to be the next best whatever. I'm not trying to be the next best prophet or the next this. I believe in, I, I must tell you, this is quite funny. The other day, I get a letter from one of my, one of my pastors in, uh, in Botswana. Now, his new title, he, he went from pastor to apostle, which is okay if that's what he wanted to do. But now his new title is Major Apostle. Major apostle, I don't know what happened to the minor apostle, but anyway, he's now become a major apostle, and that he feels that that gives him some kind of authority. No, I don't have authority in me because of a title. I have authority in me because of Christ on the inside of me, and I speak his word because as, I, as he does, so I do. So I don't care if you recognize me by my name or my title or who I am. That's not important. What's important to me is do you see Jesus on the inside of me? Ever since I was a little boy, I used to walk around. I grew up in a Pentecostal church. We didn't really speak like I did when I was 12 years old. But I can remember that day when uh, I used to start. All of a sudden, there's this thing that started welling up on the inside of me. And I've always had the desire, and I would say this to my wife thousands of times over, if there's something that I desire is that people would see Jesus on the inside of me. Say that from a little boy, 12 years old. I believe that was the Holy Spirit in the spine. And as I stand before, in front of you today, the question again that even I ask myself is, Mark, who do you follow? Do you follow the Christ that you say you serve? When you continue to look at the word follow, you go on to see it says a pursuer, someone who pursues. Someone who chases. Remember when uh, Tommy Tini used to preach and all of a sudden everybody was God chasers? I still am a God chaser. <laughs> Hello? I might not have the t-shirt and the bumper sticker and the tag plate, but I still am a God chaser. I'm still a pursuer of the most holy God. That thing, hadn't for, I, that thing has took root in my heart. I am a God chaser. Hello? Running after him. A friend of mine said, hey, Brother Mark, you don't need to chase after God. You don't need to pursue him. You already have everything that you need. Well, my love for him causes me to run after him, hello, to pursue him wherever he is I want to be, hello. Now, I also know that wherever I am, Christ is. As we walked into this place, the presence of God came in here. As we began to lift our voices to the living God, the presence of God filled this atmosphere. But it came from within you, friend, hello. So again, ask yourself, who do I follow? To pursue, to chase after, continue to proceed along a path or a route. To go after someone in order to observe or monitor, to strive after, to aim at. Isn't those an amazing words? That's in the Oxford Dictionary, by the way. I am a pursuer of the heart of God. In other words, friend, I, I don't know about you, but everything that he does, I want to do. Do you know there was a... There was a time that I held a little baby in my arms. The child was about six, seven, eight weeks. And I did something you probably should not do to a six, seven, eight week old baby. I had a lollipop in my hand. And uh, that little kid was minding his own business, just enjoying being held in, in my arms. And so when nobody was looking, I, I put a little, you know, on his tongue. And I can remember how he pulled his face. Because it was the first time he'd ever tasted something like that. Pulled his face. But then all of a sudden his brain must have said, hello, <laughs> that was actually a nice thing. And, he, and so I gave him a little bit more. And, and, and so what I learned to that moment was that we, we impart, we add, we give into our children's lives. And many of them have become the, the product of who we are. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ, the more time you spent feeding, hallelujah, he just more time you, be, you pursued him and ran after him and chased after him. I couldn't get enough of him, I don't know about you, but I still cannot get enough of him. 
There's something about Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not just trying to impress you tonight and say, you know, I'm a pursuer. I'm the, but I'm asking you again. The, I, the, the reason why this came into my spirit this morning is I was just reading uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. But Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And all of a sudden, this thing jumped in my spirit. Mark, who do you say you follow? You know, it's very easy to walk around and quote scriptures backwards, do somersaults, fast 40 days, do all the wonderful stuff we think that, you know, impresses everybody else. God's not looking at that. God's not looking at how well you can quote scripture. Nothing wrong with that. God's not looking at how long you fast. Nothing wrong with that. God's not looking at all the stuff that you think is important to him. In fact, I think that we're going to be shocked to find out the things that we've placed value on, God considers worthless. <laughs> has become idol and idols in our lives, become things we just do. And God's not about just doing, God is. And so what, what you and I need to do this day is begin to pursue Him in such a way that we become a reflection of who He is. Can you truly say today, follow me as I follow Christ? Does your life truly represent and reflect Him in everything that you do and say? Now, you might say to me, Mark, that is impossible. In the natural, it might be impossible, but the Word of God said, with God, all things are possible. Let me tell you, my friend, it is possible to reflect His nature. It is possible to reflect His heart. It is possible to reflect His love. It is possible to reflect the things of the Spirit. Hello? It is possible for those who believe. For all who believe. Now my battery's going a little flat here, so we'll wing it. Hello? Not my battery, sorry. <laughs> In John chapter 10, verse 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. You know, friend, the best way for you to, f to follow Christ is to spend time in His presence, to spend time in His Word to spend time praying. You know what? These are things we talk about, but let me tell you something. You, it is a sad state of affairs to see how many believers do not spend time in the presence of God. I'm not just talking about spending five minutes here quickly in the morning before you head off for work. I'm not talking about that. I, although it's good to spend that time, I'm talking about a lifestyle of prayer. I'm talking about a lifestyle of spending time in the Word of God. You will know the voice of God. You know how many Christians walk around today and they don't know when God is speaking? How many times have you heard Christians come and say, well, I, when, when things are difficult in their lives, they think that God has forgotten them and He doesn't love them anymore. Well, the Word of God doesn't say that. It doesn't say that when you go through difficulties, I will turn my back on you. I don't see that anywhere in the Word of God. It doesn't say when, when sickness comes your way that I don't love you anymore. It doesn't say that. When financial difficulties come your way, it doesn't say I don't care about you anymore. I don't see that in the Word of God. But you will only speak like that because you're following the wrong person. <laughs> But when you spend time in the Word of God, when you spend time in the presence of God, when you spend time on your knees, you will know, hallelujah, that God loves you irrespective of your circumstances. But we get these Sunday Christians, they serve God on Sunday morning, but Monday through, through the rest of the week, we, I don't know who they're serving. Now, Mark, you're being a bit harsh, and you're pointing fingers. I'm not doing that. I'm just talking, this is the truth, this is the facts. We're sitting here, countless people walking with problems. Let me tell you, I also have my share of difficulties. Every one of you sit here, you could tell your story, hello? But you know, there are some Christians who like to brag about their problems. <laughs> have you heard those guys? Every time you ask them how you're doing, they're always complaining. And always <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you're a true follower of God, no matter what you're going through, you will praise Him. While we were singing yet, God says, even in your hard times, praise me. Even through your difficult times, praise me. Even in your sickness, praise me. Every opportunity is still an opportunity to praise Him. So a follower of Christ does not, uh, is not deterred by the circumstances. But he, he continues to praise and worship and live a life of honor because he sees the one he follows <laughs> doing exactly the same. Let me tell you something. Everything that Jesus did was to bring glory to his Father. He came to die on the cross of Calvary to bring glory and honor to his Father. Jesus never came for any other reason. Amen. And so today... He says, if you want to be my disciple, you have to do exactly the same thing. 
As you see me do, you do. As you hear me say, you say. And that's it, my friends. The symbol, the gospel is actually a very simple, I don't want to use a simplified word, but it's easy. We make it difficult. We make it difficult, as I said, by trying to add so many different ingredients to what's already been accomplished. Listen, nobody else has to die on the cross of Calvary. It's done. It's finished. Jesus said, it is finished. So the question is, why do you want to add more to what has already been accomplished? Why do you think that you need to add something more when Jesus said it is finished? I mean, with respect, how arrogant can we be? Now, that might be a little bit hard for you to hear, but you don't need to add anything more. Jesus, I don't need your help. (laughs) I don't need your help. It's done. All I want you to do is walk in my word. Walk in the victory. Walk in the salvation that I have given you. Walk, hallelujah, in honor of me. Walk obedient to my word. Be a doer of my word. Be a reflection of glory. Let my light shine through you. Bring glory and honor to my Father. That's all that I want of you, my child. I want you to do exactly as I do. Now, I'm sure there are people that could preach this word much better than I'm just shooting it out there tonight. But I want you to hear the gist of what I'm saying to you is James chapter 1, 22, 25 says, but be doers of the word. A doer of the word is a worshiper. Let me tell you what worship is all about. And a worshiper is someone who obeys the word of God. He does what God tells him to do, what God expects of us. What does he expect of you? That you would love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. That you would worship him. One of the best scriptures, one of my favorites, John chapter 4, 24 says, What is God seeking those who worship him where? In spirit and in truth. It's the only passage in the New Testament where we see God is actively looking for something in you. And what is God looking for? He's looking for the sound of his son's heart beating on the inside of you. Hello, the follower of Christ. God's not listening for a different sound. He's looking for himself in you, friend. He's looking for himself in each one of us. Can we truly say that we identify with Christ or can we say that Christ identifies himself in us? Does God, when he looks at you, church, does he truly see his son on the inside of you? (laughs) When you speak to your wife, when you speak to your husband, when you speak to people around you, do we really reflect the heart and nature and the character of Christ? Or are we just busy doing our own thing? Let me tell you something. We are naive or deceived if we think that everything that we're doing right now, church, brings glory and honor to God. The only one that is perfect is Christ, the Christ we serve. But let me tell you something. As you surrender your heart, when daily. One of the things that I've learned to do is daily. Just, man, the first thing I say is, Father, today I just surrender my heart unconditionally to your plan and your purpose in me for today. Whatever it is, Lord, I surrender. Father, I put aside these things. Man, when I make a mistake, I I just say, Father, just forgive me for, for being so whatever, inconsiderate or whatever whatever it is and and just run to him because I know that what I just said or what I just did didn't bring him praise. Now you might say, oh, that's been a little bit dogmatic, it's a little bit this, a little... No, (laughs) I don't want to do anything that offends his heart. I don't want to do anything that offends his heart. Amen. I want him to look upon me and say, my son, I'm so proud of the Christ on the inside of you. Hello. I'm so proud of what Jesus has done on the inside of you. A mark of a true worshiper is a man who worships him in spirit and truth. Are you obedient? Do you comply with, conform to, adhere to, stick to, keep to, act in accordance with, abide by, uh, observe, heed, pay attention to? This is all in the dictionary, by the way, pursue. I love it. (laughs) My last point is practice. Undertake to carry out a course of action or study. We need to be copiers of Christ. We need to mimic him. We are a reproduction of Jesus. Hello. When you look at one another sitting here, spiritual believer, child of God, when you look at one another, you're not seeing the tent and the outside. We're looking at Christ in you. Hello. That's what I'm looking for. I love to be around you because you influence my heart to honor him. 
That's what I'm looking for. I, I'm going to pick on this young man today, but man, I love Matthew. Don't tell anybody I said that. It's just for you. Eh? I mean, when you're around this boy, there's just something about him. I know it's the Christ on the inside of him. Just this love that just flows out of him. And man, when you're just around him, you just want to love Jesus more because of what you, you understand what I'm saying? You get around those people. It's just because of who Jesus is on the inside of them. And I never always used to think like that. I, I had a form of godliness, but I denied the power thereof. Why? Because I was living for self. Trying to please self, trying to do this, trying to do that, thinking this is the right way, that is the right way. <laughs> but when I came to the understanding of who Jesus truly is on the inside of me, all of a sudden something changed. And I realized that God wants me to be a mirror image of his son, to echo, to emulate, to take as a pattern to take as an example, to take as a model, <laughs> to adopt the lifestyle of Oof. glory, Jesus. Corinthians 1, 11, 11, 1, sorry again, says, follow me as I follow Christ. Friends, tonight as we close this meeting, or as I finish, my heart is this, do, who do you follow? And I want you to take this question tonight and be sincere with yourself and say, Father God, <laughs> I want to be a follower of the Christ I say I serve. I don't know about you, but I just want His glory to be revealed in my heart. And the only way that happens, friend, is when you and I are no longer in the equation. I wouldn't, it would be the most amazing thing is to say, follow me as I follow my Savior. Do as I do. Can you imagine that? That everything that we do, everything that we say, is exactly the same as Jesus does and Jesus says. I want, that's a thought provoking. I don't know about you, but when I read that this morning, my goodness, it's just wow. And so the question again is who do you say you follow? Are you a follower of Christ? And if so, we're looking for Jesus on the inside of you. Amen. Now, I don't know how much time we still have. But there are a few folk that I would like to minister to tonight. Is that okay? So um, I wish my wife could play the piano. I would ask her, is there anybody here who can play? Sheila, would you like to? Yeah, you can. I know. Just softly in the background. Just, uh, and then I'm going to ask my dear friend, Brother Johnny uh, Drummond, to come stand here with me. And I just feel in my heart there are a few of you that we just want to minister to. Is that okay? And uh, just uh, to bless you. And, uh, and uh, so I want you just to bow your head and, and say, Father God, tonight in Jesus' wonderful name, Lord, we just take the simple message and ask ourselves this question. Who do we say we follow? Are we truly ref a reflection of your heart? Are we truly a reflection of your nature and your character? Do we truly stand here tonight and, and are able to say, follow me as I follow him? Do as I do, do as I say. Walk as I walk, talk as I talk. Father, there is so much of self in the way and I know that as we come before you tonight, Jesus, you said, if you want to be my disciple, deny yourself. Tonight, Father God, I know the cry of your heart is that the church, your church, the body of Christ, would deny itself so that Father God your Son Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior would be lifted up for all man to see for I know that the world is looking for this, a Savior I know there are the unbelievers looking for the true Christ the world is looking to the sons of God the revelation of the living God the world is crying out they don't know it but they're crying out the unbelievers crying out right now. I hear the sounds, the anguish, the suffering, crying out for a Savior. But Jesus, I know that you have come to set man free. Let your church rise up this day. Let the body of Christ be the image and the example of Christ. Hello. Let your glory be revealed in our hearts and our lives in such a way that our husbands and our wives know you. 
that our children know who Jesus is, that our family members will know the Christ because of who we are, hello, who we become in you, that our lives are hidden in you, Father. We will understand it's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about my ministry. It's not about my business. It's not about what I have in the bank or what I don't have. But it's all about the Christ on the inside of me. Tonight, Father God, we just surrender our hearts to you. Friend, as you sit here tonight, I'm asking you to take that step of faith. Just stand with me and say, Father God, tonight is a step of faith. I declare, I surrender my heart unconditionally to you. If that's you, just stand with me for a moment. I don't want you to stand just because I'm asking you to stand. I'm asking you to stand because that is the desire of your heart. Jesus is asking you. (laughs) He is saying to you, if you want to be my true disciple, deny yourself. And I believe that we're entering a time right now where the church will deny itself, will deny the flesh, will deny its ambition and its, its desire. But the church will come to that place of seeking the heart of God, hallelujah, and be found in His presence, worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. So friend, just where you are, just say, Father God, quietly, just say, Father God, I come. I come today. Surrender my heart to You. I follow You, Jesus, hallelujah. Let my life be a reflection of who You are. And so, Father God, tonight we just come into your presence and give you glory, give you honor. Thank you, Lord, that those by way of television and the internet are just praying in their homes right now. Father God, we just come to the realization of who Jesus is on the inside of every one of us. Forgive us as a church, Lord, for being selfish and maybe being forgetful and trying to add more to what you've already accomplished in us. Heal our hearts, restore our lives in such a way, Father God, that the world will see Jesus high and lifted up. Let your church be a truly reflection of who you are. Let the glory of God be revealed through and in the church of Jesus Christ. Let the hunger in our hearts cause us to pursue you like never before to run after you, to chase after you, Father, to mimic your lifestyle and the words that you speak. That wherever we go, in places of schools, in our places of business, in our homes, in our communities, in in the county and in the state, Lord, and across the nation, that hearts would be raised towards you, God. For, Father, I know that you have a plan for your church in the United States of America. You have a plan, oh God. So I pray, Lord, that as we surrender our hearts tonight, that the plan of Jesus, hallelujah, will come forth. Tonight I see by the Spirit of God, and I prophesy this, I see a flower coming to to fruition, blooming, hallelujah, and bringing praise and glory and honor to God. It is as if there's a new beginning on the inside of the body of Christ that will cause hearts and lives to turn back to Jesus. In this nation, many have turned their backs away from God because of what they've seen happening in the church. But I believe that God is causing the church right now to be the catalyst, hallelujah, that God will cause many to come back to Jesus Christ. So Father, we surrender our hearts, even the small group that we are tonight. By faith, we come, hallelujah. And say, Father, we surrender unconditionally to your purpose in us, for you are the one we follow. You are the one we chase after. You are the one we pursue. No matter how lonely the road might look, we know, God, that there are thousands that you are raising up right now (laughs) that are desperately in love with you, Jesus. So, Father, for a moment, I'm going to hand the mic over to my brother just to prophesy as the Spirit of God lays upon his heart. Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, Darkness shall cover the 
earth in gross darkness the, the people we can see the gross darkness we can see and we can even name the major gross darkness that's covering and trying to come into the western hemisphere and into the western countries and bring in a cloak of darkness but God says for us his people to arise and shine for thy light is come the light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ has arisen and shined upon our lives the light and the glorious blood of Jesus Christ was shed on Calvary and we're here at this moment in time church we're here at this very minute in time It's a glorious time because the darker the night, the brighter the light will shine. The darker the night, the darker the hour when we stand and say, the answer is Jesus. The answer has always been Jesus. There isn't several ways to the pearly gate. The old song in the hymn book says there's just one way to the pearly gate. But other religions say, oh, there's different ways to get to God. And many people, popular people, even in this nation are saying there's many ways to God. But I'm so glad to be able to say tonight that whenever I was in my darkest hour, I remembered the God that my parents brought me up under in an old Baptist church. And I heard the name of Jesus. And whenever we were at our darkest hour, I remembered that. And I called upon the name of Jesus and chains fell that had us bound and yoked down that we even believed in our own heart that we would never be free from because brother mark we heard the lie of the enemy that said i have you and i have you forever and hell will be your home but at the very mention <laughs> The very speaking of the name of Jesus. Jesus, I need you. Jesus of my childhood. Jesus, I need you. He showed up. And He's showing up in America right now. He's showing up over this nation right now. Amen. I'm glad that what Brother Mark said tonight already it's it's not something that we got to look to out there in the future but right now we are the salt of the earth right now the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob is saying rise up and walk in the now be the children of God now I'm glad I was born in this hour. I'm glad I was born in this day. I'm glad that I am in the end times. I'm glad that I'm seeing what I see happening right now. The very prophetic word of God being fulfilled. Things that we are seeing with our very eyes today. The second coming of Jesus Christ is going to come and we see the prophetic word of God being fulfilled that's bringing up and we see that we're in the season we're in the season of revival we're in the season of great things we're in the season of Amen. We're at the right place at the right time. Serving the right God. Serving the true and the living God. 
Amen, 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 amen. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Brother Mark, I was thinking just not going into politics at all, (laughs) but whenever you see who a man's enemies are, that makes you say, that's the one I'm going for. Whenever you see all of the darkness coming out and saying, no, 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 we can't have Him, we can't have Him, that's the one that we can't have. Amen. I came into this political season praying and saying, God, which one's the answer? Which one's right? What's right? What's right for America? And then the people made my choice. I know who I'm going to vote for. I know who I'm going. I know who I'm telling everybody to vote for. It's the one that the enemy's against so much. Whew. I'm glad that I know who my enemy is. I'm glad that I know who my enemies are, but I'm glad that I know who my God is. And God that I serve is greater. I thank God that I have friends that will help me defeat every enemy in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our hearts. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for what you're doing across this nation right now. And we give you glory and honor as your people surrender to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As we follow hard off to you, we know, Lord, that your glory will be revealed in us in Jesus' wonderful name. Young lady, just come here quickly. Come stand here with me. Andy, come here, love. Come here, love. Thank you. you know, while Brother Johnny was just sharing there, I just want you to know the Lord said that as you've come down this valley, you will go out of this to the hilltop a different person. You've come to this place, not here tonight, but you've come to this place in your life, this season in your life, seeking answers. For there are many things that have taken place around you that have even caused and created confusion in your heart. And you've come to that place of not understanding. The words that people have spoken, the things that people have said, have taken root in your heart and caused you to become confused about what's happening or what's taking place. But I want you to know that God says that I got you covered. I am causing you to understand this day. Now, when God says He's causing you, it means I'm making it a reality on the inside of you. I'm causing you to know my love, my truth, and my word, for it shall manifest in you in ways that you never comprehended thought was possible. And the Lord says that I'm going to send you out to the mountaintop. From this valley, I'm going to take you out. God says that I'm going to bring you to the place of order and the place of victory and you're going to speak the word that I've placed on the inside of you and the Lord says that confusion goes this day in Jesus name as you speak by faith as you declare the word of truth over you God says you will see the healing power the victory the word of God established on the inside of you would bring glory and honor to him it's not by chance that you came here and everybody that knows you tonight will understand what I'm saying I am honored to stand with you, my wife and brother Johnny, to tell you that God's purpose on the inside of you is about to be released in such an amazing way that you would be astounded at who Jesus is on the inside of you. Young lady, just raise your hands for a moment. Father God, in Jesus' wonderful name, we just come to you this day and we thank you, Lord, for the victory you established on the cross of Calvary Father, that you touch this precious young lady's heart today. That the glory that is Jesus would be revealed in her and through her. And Father, every word that has been spoken against her, every plan of the enemy to destroy your plan and purpose in her, I thank you comes to nothing this day as we declare uh, the victory of the cross established in the inside of her heart right now. We thank you for the victory of the cross. We thank you for the love that is Jesus that flows, flows, flows towards her and through her in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Father, all resistance goes this day 
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all that Jesus is asking you to do is to surrender. To surrender your heart. Say, Father, I surrender. Just surrender, surrender, surrender. Amen. Give a hug. Thank you, Father. We want you to know, I'm, I'm not going to go to everybody tonight. I don't know if you have a word that you want to share with any, a specific prophetic word for anybody. No? Sure. So I just want to thank you, my sister. Thank you, friends, for the opportunity just to come. Sharon, we love you. We honor the Christ in you. And uh, we know you guys are tired, but as you came tonight, <laughs> it was a real blessing. Amen. Thank you for having us. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Wasn't we privileged to be the first to get Brother Mark after he come in from Africa? I would like for you to let's prepare to give and sow into this ministry. Brother Mark, and we appreciate Pastor Sheila so much that she, she brings and she shares with us some of the finest ministers that you could want to get. Not very many people would help you get somebody down into the valley for a Friday Night Live. We'd like to ask you that would like to give over the internet if you want your offering to be sowed into the ministry of Brother Mark, that you would just mark it that. There's a place that you can contribute and just put Brother Mark's name on it. You that are here, let's stand together and ask you to come. Father, we thank you that we have the privilege of sowing into this ministry that he might go and tell others and tell others and tell others and tell others about you. We bless your name tonight as we give unto you and to the cause here tonight. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. May come. seated if you praise God what a privilege what a privilege what a privilege hallelujah so honored for this ministry here tonight pastor Sheila and for each and every one of you that have come out tonight and you that have watched in it's my great privilege to be able to say we have Sharon and Philip back with us yeah. as of a maybe <laughs> an hour and a half or two hours ago let's give Sharon a hand as she comes praise God praise God Personally, I haven't seen you since January the 4th. <laughs> and our paths seem to have missed some. And, of course, Sharon has been, and Philip's been out. But we're so glad to have him home. God bless you. Well, it's just a privilege to get back to Engeltal, to our home. And I greet all the staff and all the guests tonight and all of you that are watching. Um, I hope I can make sense. We haven't, uh, we haven't really lit yet. <laughs> you know, we, we, uh, we left Israel. Well, it was Thursday night, um, their time, which is 
well, anyway, I won't try and do the math. Um, it, it's it's over 40 hours since uh, since we were horizontal. Okay, so <laughs> it's sort of like uh, I just I just know that the goodness of God is with us, and it's His grace that enables us to do what we do and to be who we are in Him. It's His grace. And I just want to echo and say amen to what you were preaching tonight, Brother Mark, because I wrote some of those very things in my prayer letter this week <laughs> over the Atlantic on the way home. Um, so I, I just, I just uh, am blessed to, you know, know that that's, that's the word that the Holy Ghost is saying right now. The importance of hearing what our Father says and that's what we say. And seeing what he does, and that's what we do. That's, that's what Jesus did, and that's what he's expecting of us in these days. You know, the earth is groaning and travailing in birth. You know, just waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Well, who are the sons of God? The ones that are going to act like Jesus. Not just act, but be like Jesus. Not just an outward show when everybody's looking, but to the core. And how do we get there? By grace. It's all by grace. It's always going to be by grace. It's always going to be by his impartation as we yield, as we submit, as we lay our lives down. And say, I want your way. I want your will. Your timing. I'm tired of trying to engineer it myself. Just your way, Lord. Just your way. And I believe that probably all of us in this room feel that way. And probably all who are watching feel that way. And that's why you're watching. Because the Holy Spirit is raising up a people that'll just obey him. They'll just hear his voice and obey. We were just in the Galilee with Yonit and Arnie Klein in a time of worship and waiting on God. It was powerful. One of the things that our brother Arnie shared with us, you know the scripture when Elijah is on Mount Horeb and he hears the still small voice. Arnie speaks Hebrew, so he has... He has a little more insight than the rest of us. You know, we get from the Strong's Concordance, which he does too, but um, he gets a little bit more because he speaks Hebrew. He said the word still is actually the word for dumb, like not being able to speak. And the word small has the implication of being crushed. That's how soft and silent that word was. And when we consider how our Father's heart has been so neglected, you know, we as people have a tendency to just go to him to ask for something. You know, that's what prayer is to a lot of people. To, you know, we're making our supplications. And God wants us to do that. But he really wants people to care about him, to care about his heart, and not neglect him for who he is. Just spending time in, in his presence. 
whether he chooses to speak or not. He just wants to know that we care. That we'll lay aside our agendas for long enough to just hear from him. Or just be with him. Just smile at him. Here I am, Lord, I care. I want to know your heart. I believe that's why we're here, because we really want to know his heart. And he wants us to know his heart. Father, we thank you Thank you for this beautiful time in your presence tonight. Thank you for the privilege of worshiping you. Thank you for the privilege of hearing your word. Thank you that your spirit will inscribe it in our hearts, not just in our minds, but to make it a part of us that it becomes automatic to react the way you react, to love the way you love, to be filled with your joy, to be filled with your peace, to have your patience, your kindness, your gentleness, your meekness, your self-control. All those Christ-like characters that come with the infilling of the Holy Spirit as we yield to you. Thank you. Thank you for giving us your spirit to make all this possible. We say thank you. Can you lift your hands and say thank you tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. Thank you for keeping us for all these months and miles. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness, Lord. We bless you, Father. We bless you. We bless you. Now we just want to bless all of you who have come tonight, all of you who are watching, whether you're watching now or through the archives. We want to speak a blessing over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Did you have any announcements? Oh, uh, why don't you come? Because you know better. Um, for our audience out in the internet, we, with sadness, announced that our brother Pat Holloman went to be with the Lord day before yesterday on the 16th. You know, it was, he wasn't sick. It was one of those suddenlies. Last Friday night, when they asked, what do we put on for the Friday Night Live? It didn't come through my mind or anything. I come up out of my spirit. I said, put on Pat Hollerman Saturday morning. So last Friday night, we showed Pat Hollerman's last year in March that 
stepping into the supernatural and his memorial service will be Monday I think there's a viewing uh, from 1 to 1.30 and then the services there in Palm Harbor but let's remember the family his wife Valerie the ministry his children and his grandchildren this was quite a suddenly and quite a shock to all of us I guess quite possible that before the emergency prayer thing went out well he was already in the presence of the Lord so let's remember that Pat Holloman that was here and conducted the service last March went to be with the Lord this past uh, two days ago on the 16th God bless you see you next Friday night tune in for Friday night live worship next Friday night see you right here at Maranatha God bless you